Hi, my name is Erin Ruggieri, and I'm one of the marketing coordinators for the School of Health Sciences at BCIT. And tonight you're joining us for the Medical Laboratory Science Program Information Session. Uh, so I uh, just want to thank all of you for taking the time of your schedule to come and listen to us and learn more about our program and about the exciting career of working in MedLab. Uh, so before we get started, the British Columbia Institute, Institute of Technology acknowledges that our campuses are located on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish nations of the Squamish, tsleil and Musqueam. So our agenda this evening is a welcome and introductions. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, we're going to have a little poll question and a video. I think we might have switched the order of those two. Um, and then we're going to have a presentation, a program overview, some information on how admissions works, and a applications. And then at the end, we're going to have a Q&A. Uh, now, we will have time for the questions at the end, but also if you think of questions as we go along, feel free to type them into the chat function. Uh, that's either the bottom or top of your screen, depending on how you have it set up there, uh, just so that uh, we can see if we can try and answer some of those questions um, as we go along. Because uh, I know that uh, sometimes we come with a lot of questions to these things, and there's a lot to, to learn about um, these different programs and how to apply to them. So moving forward, I'm going to introduce Julian, our program head. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Julian Fo. Um, I graduated from this program about 10 years ago and have been in healthcare for the last, well, this whole time um, until I joined BCIT. And should we start by sharing the video then, Julian? Yeah, let's start with the video. Okay. So this now. video is um, a video from WorkBC about the medical laboratory profession. Our next career plays a vital role in the field of medical science. We're in the lab today to meet a medical lab technologist. Hi. Hi, I'm Jody. I'm Brian. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let's get a lab coat on and get you started. Great. My name is Jody Simmons. I'm a medical laboratory technologist and we're at the Dawson Creek and District Hospital Lab. Medical laboratory technologist works in the lab. They run patient samples, blood and body fluids. Uh, they're tests that are ordered by a doctor and we run them on instruments and we make sure that those results are accurate and precise before we release them to the doctors. A typical day would involve coming in and waking up all our instruments and then we would have to pull quality control material to make sure that our instruments are running correctly. We would be doing any maintenance like pulling apart the instrument and cleaning it before we would want to run any patient samples. What is this machine? They were looking at the inside of a chemistry analyzer. So when someone, for example, comes in the hospital with a heart attack or a suspected heart attack, mm -hmm. this is actually one of the instruments we use to see if there's been damage. So you're always learning about new instruments. Your day is always different. Your day is never the same. You might be learning a new instrument, a new technology. In a small lab like this, we are required to draw blood sometimes. So we'll draw the blood and bring it back to the lab. We're looking at tubes, and I'm going to tell what this person's blood type is by using my reagents and these tubes. So if you're an A pause patient, or if your blood type is O, I'll be able to tell from these from these tests. Okay. You're putting drops in tubes, and you're using pipettes and small equipment, and you're doing maintenance, so it's good to be able to work with your hands. It's good to be very organized, so you can organize your workflow and compartmentalize because you have priority specimens as well. You might get pulled from one thing and there's a stat that comes in that's a lot more, has priority over a routine sample, and you need to stop what you're doing and work on that stat specimen from em the emergency, for example. Always double check your work, because sure. you do not want to make a mistake. This person's bleeding in the merge, and they need blood quickly. You need to work quickly, but accurately as well. I don't think people realize how closely we work with other healthcare professionals. We work with nurses and doctors quite a bit. So the centrifuge is slowing down. It has spun the two samples together. So basically, your, my patient cells have just been spun. But if you look here, this is my tube. That there is a blood clot. That's a glutination of a patient cells. So because the blood clumped together within this solution, you know that this is what type of blood? This is an A person. Okay. Because I put a reagent in and the blood clumped. 
We have an A person. We work shift work, so we have day shifts. Our day shifts start at 7.30 to 4. And then we have a person coming in at 2.30 till 11 o'clock at night, and they're our evening shift. So they're on call all night until the next morning. I was interested in chemistry and biology in high school, and then I went on to get a university degree in biochemistry. There is a degree you can get for medical laboratory te technologist, but I have a certification and it's a diploma. So it's a two and a half year program. The advantage of having a degree over the diploma is you do get paid extra and you can also uh, take a management position a little easier than that. But the diploma, everybody is certified. You take a certification exam and everybody is considered certified and you can work anywhere in Canada. There's always opportunities to further advance your education. You could specialize in another department like microbiology. Also the uh, CSMLS, which is our certifying body, offers courses online that you can take and further advance. My advice for somebody straight out of school would be to go and do a lab tour, talk to somebody that works in a lab. A good medical laboratory technologist pays attention to detail, they're considerate to others, they really do care about the well-being of people, even though you're not in the forefront and people don't always see you. It's nice to know that you're having an impact on somebody's life. Jody, thank you so much for showing me around. Nice meeting you. Don't forget to wash your hands. You got it. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Once again, I'm Brian for Career Trek, reminding you that this career could be yours. See you next time. Okay, Julian. Okay, so let's talk about medical laboratory science. Um, what you see in front of you is an indigo lab coat. Um, it may just look like a normal lab coat, but if you were to zoom in, um, next slide, yeah. So written in very small font um, all over the lab coat are the names of the tests that are performed by medical lab techs on a daily basis. So as a profession, um, we medical lab techs in Canada perform 1.2 million tests a day. Um, to help doctors figure out what is and is not wrong with a, with a patient so that they can be treated properly. Medical laboratory technologist, um, we might just shorten it to MLT because it is a very long word or set of words. So MLTs are healthcare professionals that work in hospitals, private labs, and other healthcare centers. Our job is to perform testing um, in order to provide the information that doctors need to properly treat a patient. Without medical lab techs, doctors do not have the full picture. So for example, um, let's say that you have an arm infection. Now the doctor might know that there's probably a bacteria that is involved, but they might not know what kind of bacteria it is. And they also might not know if the bacteria is resistant to any antibiotics. Um, that kind of information is what we as medical lab techs are looking through and trying to uncover for the doctor so that they can treat you with the right medication. Uh, we perform testing on just about anything that can come out of the human body, so urine, blood, feces, body tissue, and we use advanced technology to do that testing. Now, the size of the instrumentation that you use as a lab tech can be quite vast. Um, it could be as small as a credit card, and it could be as big as an automation line within a warehouse. So um, a few fun facts. Um, there is a large demand for medical laboratory professionals. We have close to 100% um, hiring rate after graduation and completion of the certification exam. We work in hospitals, community labs, um, private clinics, blood banks, and research facilities. Um, the program gives you the credentials to work in the five main medical laboratory science disciplines anywhere in Canada. So we're talking about microbiology, transfusion sciences, hematology, chemistry, and, sorry, and also molecular diagnostics. Um, we are the largest multi program in Canada and we are the third largest program within the BCIT School of Health Sciences. The program itself, it is a two and a half year full-time diploma program. It is delivered on campus 
and it provides you with a strong theoretical and practical foundation by combining lectures and labs where you will be simulating and training on the different skills that a medical lab tech needs. Um, it is broken up into five levels or five terms. In the first term, we will be teaching you the foundations that you will need to um, become a medical laboratory technologist. And in the second to fourth term is when you will get uh, more knowledge and skills in the main disciplines within medical laboratory science. Now, when you get to the fifth term, is that is when you go to a 35 week clinical practicum at one of our partner sites across BC. So it could be a hospital, it could be a private lab. And um, during that 35 weeks, you will get on the job training and maybe you'll find your future um, workplace. Now the pr clinical practicum itself, um, as I said before, it can be located at any hospital or private lab at, at throughout British Columbia. These 35 weeks, um, you will be rotating through um, the five main um, medical laboratory science disciplines, and you will be you will have to work in multiple sites and shifts so that you can get a good representation of what the professor profession looks like. Um, students are responsible for their own transportation and accommodation. Uh, while on clinical placement. And we wanted to note that practicums are paid. Um, so it is something to consider. We do have bursaries and grants that you could apply to from a financial standpoint. In terms of job opportunities. So as I mentioned before, um, as a medical lab tech, you often start your career at the training site that you um, spent your practicum in. Um, it could be the hospital, it could be a, a private lab. And depending on what um, department you prefer, odds are you will have an opportunity to work in that area. And it is something that um, will be different for everyone. It is a job that requires precision, technical skills, and, and uh, analytical thinking. But um, to compensate you for it, um, you will enjoy a professional level salary, around 35 bucks an hour is the medium hourly wage. And the certification that's to work anywhere in Canada as a lab tech. Now, there are a number of other career paths that you can pursue within a med with a medical laboratory diploma. We have graduates that move on into management or leadership positions. They move on into project management or IT. Um, they may end up going to Canadian Blood Services, um, the BCCBC. They may end up going into the veter veterinarian and industrial laboratories that we have around BC. And some go to pharmaceuticals or they end up going to research and development or into sales um, of medical laboratory instrumentation. So there's lots of options that people have gone through um, after finishing the program. And of course, um, you could always come back and help us teach the next generation on lab techs as I am doing now. Um, and that's a good thing about the program is we are very welcoming. Now, this picture is an example of the type of work area that you might end up in. Um, we have a student and a, and a working technologist um, training them at the hospital on the urinalysis instrument. We're going to pass it over to Paige, one of our current med lab students at BCIT. Uh, Paige, how are you doing? Good, good. Good. Okay, so um, I don't know uh, if we prepped you before with a bunch of um, questions, but I, I, I want to start off by saying uh, thank you for joining us and thank you for sharing your experiences. I know sometimes for people listening, it's a little more valuable to hear from a current student than to hear from us older people. Um, <laughs> and I hear what it's really like. Uh, so Paige, why did you choose BCIT Med Lab and kind of what led you here to this program? Um, so I was ending university as the pandemic started in April 2020. And I was looking for something to do to help out. So I actually applied to start working at the CDC as a COVID lab assistant. Um, and it was the one of the largest 
uh, strains on healthcare I'd seen in like my entire 26 years of life. And it was great to be able to help out in that kind of atmosphere. Um, I fell in love with it and with my like 60 coworkers that I had, um, I'm still friends with all of them to this day. One of them is actually my roommate and, um, he's in the program with me. Um, I found it was a good fit because it was a nice fast paced environment and it was very analytical. Um, there was always a right answer for everything. And then if there wasn't, you would look into it. Um, and it was a huge team centered atmosphere where everyone worked together and helped each other out. There was a lot of communication and organization. And what I enjoyed most was helping patients in the province. Wonderful. So my next question is going to be, what do you love so far? What, what do you enjoy most about the program? Um, but you may have already answered part of that. Is there anything else that you find that you really enjoy about the program at BCIT? Um, so in, in our program, the, all of the material is really interesting. Um, you get to do and see a lot of cool things when you're in the lab and they get more and more interesting as you go through the program. Um, I'm level two right now and it's much more interesting than level one. Um, and you get to build on all your previous information. Um, we've learned how to draw blood from each other and the people who drew blood got to test to see what their blood type was. And the instructors are really sweet and they care and they, they want to help you and guide you through all of the courses. Wonderful. Um, what would you say to somebody that's considering this as a career? Um, being an MLT is all about caring about the patients and providing results that inform the physicians and the healthcare providers on how to best build a treatment plan for the patient. Um, you work in so many different atmospheres. You'll take so many different courses in the program. And if anything that I've said has resonated with you and it sounds like something that you've been thinking about or it sounds like something you would enjoy, I highly recommend it. Wonderful, thank you. Julian, do you have any other questions for Paige? No, Paige is great. <laughs> Yes, Paige is Thank great. You. Paige, um, if you can hold on the call um, and see if anybody has any questions for you in the chat as we go along, that'd be great too. So if anyone has a question for Paige, feel free to put those into the chat. So now that we've given you all kinds of information about the program and about the profession, uh, the next step is kind of how do you apply? How do you go about starting this program? So uh, MedLab has an intake uh, once a year in September. Uh, so the application for this coming September 2023 is currently open. It opened on October 1st and it closes May 1st. So you'd still have time to get your application in. It's a two and a half year full-time diploma program, as we mentioned earlier. Um, and so you can apply by May 1st, 2023, and all your documents will need to be in by that deadline if you're applying for this September. So the application steps. First off, you want to go onto our website, BCIT Med Lab. Uh, you review the requirements and the application dates. All of our program entrance requirements are listed there. Make sure you review them carefully. Make sure you've got everything on the list. Convert all of your documents to PDF files. Complete the CASPER and the mandatory questionnaire and then apply online at bcit.ca. Everything is done electronically online for applications now. Um, you may be wondering what CASPER is. CASPER is a uh, online test. It's done by a company called TakeAltus, I believe, .com. Uh, Darren can put the link for you into the chat on Casper, so you can go on the website and check out more information about it. Uh, Casper is not something you can study for. It's really a kind of a situational personality test. It's kind of, they'll give you a situation and, and you kind of have to interpret that situation and see how you would respond in that situation, kind of giving an idea about uh, how you would behave in circum circum certain circumstances. Hope that makes sense. Uh, so the entrance requirements, these are also listed on our website. Uh, first of all, you have to have proficiency in speaking and listening in English. Uh, so two years of your education must have been done in English or an English speaking country. Um, this is really important because while you do work alone a lot in med lab on uh, machinery and on processes, you also really have to, to communicate with your team. Uh, so the uh, courses are also uh, English Studies 12, 
pre-calc 12, anatomy and physiology 12, chem 12, and physics 11. Now those first four all need to be at a 73 or higher, physics 11 at a 67 or C plus or higher. Uh, so again, those are the entrance requirements, but preference will be given to applicants with the math, biology, and physics requirements completed within the last five years, uh, any additional post-secondary education, uh, consistently good grades in your education, uh, demonstrated interest in the field, and any related volunteer or work experience. So those items on the right are not required, but they will get you a leg up on your application. So for your transcripts and your documents, I mentioned earlier that everything is done electronically now. Uh, so you'll need to upload digital copies of your transcripts and documents. We do not want you mailing in transcripts if we can avoid it now, we don't need the hard copies. So you can scan or take a picture of your official transcript and upload it. Or if you can download a digital copy from your previous school, you can also upload that. If you have been a BCIT student in the past, we don't need your official transcript because we already have that on file, but you will need to kind of just notify us that you've been a BCIT student so we know to look for that and we don't miss it. So once all your documents are in and you've paid the application fee, which I believe is $90 now, uh, your application will go to admissions and admissions will make sure that all the requirements have been met. So they're just making sure your, the basic requirements have been met. Then they will forward your complete application to the uh, Med Lab Science Department. So after the application deadline, we don't do this, any of this until the deadline and everybody's in, uh, the department will kind of shortlist, they'll choose our shortlist. And those applicants are shortlisted, will come and attend a multiple mini interview, an MMI as we call it. So that's just a quick little interview, uh, just so that we uh, get to see every face-to-face. -face. Uh, we will then select the applicants and admissions will send the acceptance letter. And at that time, you'll have to pay your commitment fee to confirm that you're coming to BCIT. Once you start the med lab program, you might be curious about where you can take this. I mean. Uh, we're always looking for growth through our careers, uh, different options uh, if we want to change things up as we go along. Uh, so definitely, once you do your diploma in med lab, there's options to go into the med lab science program at UBC, uh, Bachelor of Health Science at TRU. Uh, we have a health leadership advanced certificate at BCIT. We have a Bachelor of Technology and Technology Management at BCIT. Uh, there's a new digital health uh, advanced certificate that we're uh, starting at BCIT too. So there's lots of options for, for continued growth. And in the video we showed you earlier, you'll notice, um, you might remember that uh, the MedLab tech there said that the CSMLS, the governing body for MedLab, is always offering additional courses for people that are already in the profession to kind of continue their career growth and to kind of keep relevant and current. So you're always learning, which is wonderful. We gave you a lot of information about how to apply and how to uh, get in, but what happens once you're a student here? Uh, BCIT wants to continue to support your success once you arrive here. Uh, and these are a few of the ways that we do this. Uh, first on the screen being our Indigenous Services Department. So if you identify as Indigenous, uh, this is what you'll want to take a look at. Uh, Indigenous Services offers a welcoming gathering place for students. Uh, they have information on uh, Indigenous specific funding for students, and they have a number of elders they're connected with uh, in the surrounding communities. So they're a great resource. Student financial aid and awards. Uh, this is where you go to for all your bursary questions, scholarship questions, financial aid questions. Uh, and I know they do have a president's entrance scholarship that we're urging people to take a look at uh, for new incoming students. Accessibility services. This is for those who have um, an ongoing, uh, generally long-term need for some sort of accommodation in class. So if you uh, perhaps had support through high school uh, that you'd like to see continued, or if you have uh, any need for accommodation, you can reach out to the accessibility services people and they work to set that up directly with your instructors. Uh, so they're a great resource too. Student health services is one of my favorites. Uh, we have a full service health clinic on campus. Uh, so there's a doctor on staff, there's nurse on staff, and if you have a GP but can't get in to see them in a timely fashion or you don't have a local doctor, 
this is just really handy. Uh, you can make an appointment generally same day or next day uh, even. And uh, they are like a full service med clinic. So they have everything uh, that you would need from uh, a standard doctor. Counseling and student development. Uh, they are next door to student health services and they offer counseling uh, for all BCIT students, anything from uh, stress and anxiety management um, to relationship stuff to anything you might see a counselor for. And just like student health services, counseling is all confidential. So they're not gonna be passing information to your instructors. So it's, it's very confidential, it's great support. And, to uh, do some more physical work, we have recreation services. So we have a full service gym, uh, cardio weight machines. We have fitness classes uh, before school, after school and at noon hour. Uh, lots of fun things to join in uh, to kind of uh, either uh, de-stress at the end of the day or kind of get yourself uh, up and going at the beginning of the day. Uh, BCIT advising, I just wanted to point you guys to this slide. Uh, Julian is a great source of information for stuff about the program and about the career. But program advising is where you want to go for information about how to apply and uh, whether or not your transcripts are correct. Uh, we have Janice from program advising on the call right now and she's in the chat. I believe she's been answering some questions in there. Uh, so Janice is one of our many program advisors and they, they know our programs inside and out. They're a great resource. Uh, I will caution you that the information on the screen, the hours and times may or may not be correct because they do change uh, term by term and seasonally. So it's best to go onto the website, bcit.ca slash advising to check out how to reach them. And we'd love it if you stayed in touch with us, uh, learn more about us, follow us. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and we post tons of pictures about what students are doing, what our faculty are doing, what's going on in our spaces on campus. Um, so you can kind of get to know what we're all about. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can also contact us about arranging a BCIT tour. Uh, our BCIT spend a day program is listed there. Uh, so lots of ways to continue to connect with us. Okay, and now I'd like to go to our question and answer period. I have not been looking at the chat page. That was a good comment. I did not know that accessibility accommodations were available for Casper. Yeah, they are. So I, I have ADHD and I looked into it and um, I got extra time on the questions and stuff because you need some time to, mm -hmm. to chill and formulate what you're going to say. You were the first student to mention that, and we use Casper across many of our programs. So thank you for sharing that. That's really good to know. Wow, I and, can't believe no one's looked into it before. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they just haven't shared it with us. So thank you. I'm really good to know that. Uh, and actually, both Aaron and Paige, we did receive quite a few questions about Casper, the process, that sort of thing. So if, if um, one or both of you could elaborate on that, that would be really helpful. Ooh, I'm not the best to do, but I mean, you've taken it before, Paige. Do you want to give any information about it? Yeah, so basically they ask you some questions as situations and stuff, and you answer what you would do or say in the particular situation, and you just come at it. Um, you just answer honestly, and it's very quick. You have very little time to answer, which is designed to have your, your honest opinion rather than a thought out formulated response. Mm -hmm. um, so you just come at it with with empathy and understanding. There's a lot of sample questions and stuff that are online. I found those very helpful just to get a general idea of what type of things they would be asking and um, what kind of things they're expecting as a response. Um, what was really interesting is at the very end, they do ask you why you want to be in the program. Um, so that's that's something that's nice to think about. And if I can just add to that, once you've registered for your CASPER test, um, there is uh, a very large uh, bank of sample questions that you can refer to uh, once you've registered. So you can prepare that way as well. I do also want to say that the results for CASPER, I believe, are good for one year and mm -hmm. that uh, the results are directly sent to the program area. Is, is that right, Erin? I yeah. believe so, yes. So that would, I um, mean, because I was wondering about Celine's question here. She was asking, uh, how often can I take this test? Will the best score be taken for consideration? Um, I don't know, if, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if students actually see their scores. 
So I don't, I don't think they do, Erin, <laughs> no. to be honest with you. No, we see um, which quartile we scored in. So mm. they tell you uh, if you scored in the top 25% or second, third, fourth. Okay, great. Oh, interesting. Um, but I don't know. If, uh, I mean, from what I've heard, Celine, I wouldn't recommend taking it a bunch of times. Um, this is not the only thing that we look at when we're accepting students. So it's not like this is the highest weighted or the, or the only thing we're looking at. Um, and it really is just um, not something to study for. It's purely situational. People always worry about Casper more than I think they need to. <laughs> is the interview going to be like last year? Julian, do you want to answer that? The MMI. I believe so. Again, I've been here four months, so. Yeah, Julian has only been at BCIT for four months, so he has no idea what last year was like. <laughs> yes, the process will be the same. Okay. Okay, so thank then, you, Donna. I should probably cl clarify for everybody that it's not the traditional MMI like you're thinking. It's not like a board is sitting and, and observing you and you, they're asking you questions and you have to answer. It's not like not like that, so don't freak out. Um, I think there are some questions just generally in timing, how things unfold once the, 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 they submit their application and um, admissions deems that they've met the academic requirements. And then the application is then forwarded to the program faculty and program head for review. And then there's some further steps um, with that as well. And I, and I know, Erin, you did go over it, but there were some questions about sort of timelines with that. I'm wondering if Donna or Julian could speak to that about the timeline for kind of when applications, the window closes, how long everything takes after that. Yeah, we just uh, changed our program math. So I'm not really familiar, but I um, I think that our, our window opens now in May, is that right, Julian? It closes in May. Okay, so yes. then it opens in October. Sorry, that's, that's right. Opens in October. Right. Uh, or well, they're saying, yeah, opens up in October and closes in May um, for the cohort that would start in uh, September. So then, what's the timeline generally? When do students start hearing if uh, they're going to be called for the MMI, or when do start to start hearing whether they've been shortlisted? So those uh, notifications go out from our PA. And we do need a little bit of time to look at things and collate things, but uh, we do try to get out the information um, usually by the first week of June. So that students, we're, we're in line with the new map with um, SFU and UBC when they send out their acceptance. So um, that's, that's what we've moved to. So we try to let students know in June, if not before. We do try to get to it as quickly as we can. Wonderful. Good to know. Thank you, Donna. Mm -hmm. I found out that I was being asked for the interview on the 3rd of June, and then I had my interview on the 6th last year. Um, Janice, can you apply to this program with interim marks, or do you need your final grades? I was just reading that. So generally for competitive applications, we always say best to have your final grade because final grades submitted because that does give you um, a more competitive application. And this particular person is indicating that they are their their chemistry course ends April 25th and won't have their final grade. Um, it would be up to admissions and the program area if they would accept a midterm, or um, I wonder if some if if the student might be able to get something informal with a final grade, promising to follow up with a transcript. It would be really admissions and program specific if they would accept a midterm. I think generally, uh, Donna, it's always final grades, is it not? We've looked at interim grades, but we get a lot of applications. So if we have a lot of complete applications where um, the prospective candidates look like very good candidates, mm -hmm. we don't hold seats for a final grade. If, so it's that's a difficult question to ask because it's similar to another question earlier that um, candidates were asking, um, what's the the 
number of accepted to number of applications. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. that shifts with every year and every cohort as well. Those types of questions are difficult to answer in a firm manner. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it happened to be a year when there wasn't as many applications, then maybe looking at interim grades would play in. But uh, definitely come. I've always said at Big Info and other opportunities where we've had a chance to, to speak with uh, prospective candidates that a complete application is the best application. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I agree with 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 you. And, and that's how most of the health programs would look at it as well. So likely this particular person would just have to apply um, next intake when they've got final grades for everything, right? Um, there's a bit of a tricky question here, and it's, do you accept applications from someone who's um, on a work permit and has applied for permanent residency? I do know the answer on that one. Um, somebody who is here on a work permit is considered an international student, and this particular program is not available to international students, so until you have your final permanent residency, unfortunately, you cannot apply to the program yet. Um, so you'll have to hold on for a bit. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions, uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to go back towards um, the end of my slide deck. Yes, Janice? No, nope, I'm sorry. We're good. Okay. I wanted to draw your attention to two email addresses. As I mentioned before, program advising, uh, I shared their contact information, but just to reiterate, their email is program underscore advising at bcit.ca. But another helpful email address is medical underscore laboratory underscore science at bcit.ca. So if you have any questions about the program or the profession, uh, that first email on your screen would be great. If you have any questions about how to apply, program advising email is your best bet. Oh, Bella is asking another question about the MMI. Uh, Julian or Donna, does the MMI only focus on questions related to the profession? I was typing, but this is faster, so I'll untype. Um, It is the MMI in BCIT in general, because lots of programs use an MMI process, is designed to so skills that would be the best attributes to be successful in a particular area. So for us, clearly it's med lab science. So our MMI process, um, which is a multifaceted process, is designed to select students or show us students that would have the skills that would be um, give them an advantage to be successful throughout the program. And that's what what everybody's kind of looking for, no matter what program you represent at BCIT. The MMI questions come up often, and it is a very difficult one to answer because there isn't really a solid, concrete answer of what to expect in an MMI. And um, I will say that my daughter applied to medical laboratory and is a graduate. And um, when she was preparing for her MMI, we did a lot of research online. Um, and there was a lot of really great resources to explain what to expect in um, sort of an MMI um, interview. And we found it really useful. So it might be worth doing a Google to see what information um, you can and get online to explain what to expect in an MMI as well. That could be helpful. Okay, and we're going to do, okay, we have time for one last question and then I have to uh, close this off because we're going to start a different program session soon. Uh, so um, do you accept courses taken from out of province high schools? Yes, of course we do. Absolutely. Um, I would have a chat with a program advisor. There are equivalencies on the website, so you could go and, and, and find the equivalencies to um, the different courses provincially. Uh, one you have to be really careful with is biology in Alberta, and we can talk to you about that if you need some clarity on that. But but generally, other than Quebec, um, most things are accepted from um, province, uh, other provinces, absolutely fine. Okay, great. Thank you, Janice. Um, and thank you, Darren, for putting that in the chat. As uh, mentioned earlier, we will be sending you a copy of uh, the slide deck and a copy of the recording. Uh, so um, again, we really appreciate all of you coming out tonight to learn about the MedLab program and to learn about BCIT. I wanted to give a special thanks to Paige for coming on.
Uh, some of us work here, so we do this because we get paid to, but Paige is volunteering her time as a student. <laughs> we really appreciate our students stepping up into these roles and uh, and joining us on things like this. It's really, it's really great to see. Uh, so uh, again, thank you very much. Please keep in touch and we look forward to hearing from you.